Hello and welcome back to another Siemens S7-1200 and factory I.O. tutorial video. Today we are going to be making a few amendments to the ladder logic to allow the Siemens SCL code we programmed in the previous two videos to function correctly. Now it's quite a simple change to get everything to work fully, so stay tuned to find out. <laughs> OK, this is where we left off in the last video, video 10, with the pallets making their way to the small loader conveyor to be picked up by the stack of crane forks. OK, the first pallet is picked up and placed in the rack and then the stack of crane returns home, ready to pick up the next pallet. But as you can see, the small loader conveyor hasn't started and the next pallet is helped along to reflective sensor 5 by the transfer left conveyor and then goes onto the forks at an angle. Now this can cause problems when trying to put pallets in the rack. Also in this example the next pallet forced the previous pallet onto the loader conveyor and the forks got hold of almost two pallets. OK let's stop factory IO. And let's open up main OB1 and make sure we are at the bottom of the program in the output section. Let's put factory IO back into play mode. Oops, we shouldn't have done that yet. Let's take factory IO out of play mode and stop the PLC first. So everything is reset in the first ladder network. What we're going to do is take a look at the small loading conveyor output Q1.6 to see why the output doesn't start when it should. Let's start the PLC again and run factory IO. I need to zoom in a little to go into auto. zoom back out and start the system. Now let's watch the loading conveyor output at the bottom of the ladder logic code. OK, the output stops as soon as the loading conveyor one loaded sensor is detected. Let's see what happens to the pallets this time. This time the second pallet enters the loading conveyor OK and is sent to the rack satisfactorily. Let's continue watching. However, this time it seems to be the third pallet that causes the problem. So it looks as though this area of the code can be a bit temperamental depending on the timings between the pallets. Again, let's continue watching. Oh dear, it's, it's really going wrong now. OK, let's stop factory IO and have a look at the code. Let's just orientate factory IO a little better to explain things and let's stop the PLC. Right, now we can see that to start the small loading conveyor Q1.6 we need to set M1.1 loading conveyor 1 start which is done in network 6 when a pallet passes the left entry conveyor. Let's have a look at the code for that. Uh, there we go, at left entry and loading conveyor one start M1.1 is set. However, M1.0 loading conveyor loaded is set in network four when a pallet is detected by reflective sensor five. 
it isn't reset again until step nine in the SCL code. Let's look at that too. Okay, let's go back. Also note in network four, we set stacker busy M1.2, which is also not reset until step nine in the SCL code. So we can use the stacker busy signal as a normally closed contact to get the small loading conveyor going again until a pallet has loaded. So let's add that in now with some OR logic. Let's go offline first. Oops, I'm choosing the wrong symbol. I want the one next to it. OK, now a normally closed contact with the address M1.2. That's done. I'm just going to add another contact in so I can join the branches in the right position. Now I can delete the last contact I entered. OK, that's done. There's still one issue to resolve, and that is if we leave things like this, the small loading conveyor will start up as soon as we start at factory IO. So let's add a normally open contact in series M1.7 loading conveyor weight, which will delay the small loading conveyor from starting when we start at factory IO. Now this contact, once set, will only be reset when you put the PLC into run mode and start up factory IO in network one of the ladder logic code. Now we'll set this contact in network six by adding another output branch. Okay, let's do that. It's a set coil with the address M1.7. So now that should be complete. Let's download the program to the PLC and see if it all works. into auto and select the green button. We can see the stack of busy signal M1.2 is not made true yet. And because it's a normally closed contact, we have a signal path up to M1.7. However, as soon as the pallet passes the left entry conveyor, M1.7 loading conveyor weight is made true and will stay true until factory IO and the PLC are stopped and both started again. So this has allowed the loading conveyor to wait for a while until a pallet is going towards the small loading conveyor when the system is started up. OK, the first pallet is placed in the rack. The small loader conveyor starts and the next pallet is loaded as well. Let's see if everything continues to work. Yes, that's fine. And let's just continue until we get to the second row to make sure everything is working fine.
Looks like it's working. So now we need to wait until the rack is completely full and factory IO should then automatically stop. Okay, with the power of video editing, I'm just going to move on close to when the rack is full. And we are back. And as you can see, it's still working fine. Now we can speed up and slow down factory IO with the speed up button. So this just helps the process along. Let's use the power of editing again to move forward in the sequence rather than waiting for all the palettes to be placed in the rack. OK, right, we're almost there. So let's see if the system stops. Here we go. Great, that all works. So that is the end of this video. At some point in the future, we will come back to this setup and program the system to remove a palette from the rack by selecting the palette number required on an HMI screen, which will allow the next palette to go into the position where the previous palette was removed. Again, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and would like to learn more, then please click the subscribe button and the bell so you'll be informed as soon as a video is uploaded. Meanwhile, if you'd like a free 30 day trial of Factory IO, then please see the link in the description below. It does give me a small commission if you decide to buy it within 60 days, which allows me to continue making videos like this one to help you program and learn more about automation. So happy control system programming with Factory IO. Also feel free to check out my Patreon account. The link is also in the description below. So thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it all and see you in the next video. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.